Both Canadian and U.S. jobs data is set to be released tomorrow. And joining us for his outlook and for more on what we can expect for the broader economy is Sal Guattieri, Director and Senior Economist with BMO Capital Markets. Thanks so much for making time today, Sal. Welcome. So it has been a busy week and we knew going into it that the jobs data on Friday was going to be a headline event. But I wonder just to get your thoughts on what's happened so far this week. We had the Bank of Canada pausing uh, and then we heard today from the senior deputy governor of the Bank of Canada, Carolyn Rogers, talking about how, you know, more evidence is needed to see if the Bank of Canada needs to go any higher. There's something that they would be willing to do if needed. What What's sort of your take? takeaway when it comes to the message from the Canadian Central Bank this week? Yeah, Senior Deputy Governor Rogers uh, was pretty clear that uh, uh, this pause is pretty tenuous. Um, I mean, the bank did not raise rates uh, this week, and that's simply because the data is, for the most part, following its, its expectations. We did get uh, a weak GDP report, but then a bounce back, a strong bounce back in jobs, uh, which pretty well cancel each other, but she, she made it pretty clear it's very conditional. And if we see the, uh, the labor market data uh, strengthen even further, the economy uh, gathers steam, or inflation is just too slow to uh, fall further, uh, the Bank of Canada is willing to, uh, to resume tightening. Um, she she uh, basically uh, gave warning on two fronts. Number one, wages are still rising at a pretty good clip in, in Canada, while productivity is sagging for the past couple of years. And that's often a recipe for, for businesses to pass those higher wages to, to customers. And secondly, she noted that uh, we're still seeing strength in both the economy and inflation uh, outside of Canada, in particular in the U.S., uh, where the economy seems to have bounced back pretty strongly this year. The labor market is, is red hot and inflation is, is just uh, still uh, quite, uh, quite steamy. And of course, that's putting pressure on, on the Federal Reserve to uh, possibly even ramp up the speed of its rate increases. So a lot of focus on, on tomorrow's jobs reports on both sides of the border. If we do see strength or upside surprises in, in either of those or worse both uh, certainly would put pressure on both central banks to uh, to up the ante on, on tightening policy. We did get quite a surprise last time in Canada uh, with that big jump of 150,000 jobs like you mentioned that, that strong labor market data. Um, do you think that there could be a repeat of that? Anything's possible in the Canadian uh, la labor force survey. <laughs> But uh, our sense is there's probably more risk of uh, a sharp pullback in jobs, just given the enormity of, of, of the employment increase in January, 150,000, biggest increase on record outside of the, the pandemic. So there's a good chance we could see a pullback. The markets and ourselves are looking at a fairly, are expecting a fairly flat number, which um, raises the unemployment rate a tenth to 5.1%. Uh, and there'll be a lot of focus uh, in light of Roger's comments on the wage measure in that report. Uh, we suspect we could see a, a five handle again on uh, average hourly earnings growth, uh, which again might put a little pressure on the bank to, to resume, uh, resume tightening. But clearly if that labor market report shows ongoing strength in employment, uh, possible further drop in the unemployment rate and ongoing pressure on wages, uh, that would uh, certainly increase the odds of the bank uh, needing to um, uh, resume tightening policy. It, it's interesting how, um, you know, weather played a role as well when it comes to January and, and how, you know, there can be so much or, uh, attention or interest on this data um, in, in this particular moment in time, yet it still has to deal with those sort of, you know, uh, choppy factors. You know, if it was a, if it was a warm January, then that's going to have an effect that, uh, you know, isn't really... Um, um, something that uh, the, you know, the Bank of Canada's rate hikes would necessarily have control over. Yeah, not just the weather, but the, uh, even the seasonal adjustment uh, uh, has gotten trickier because mm. of the, the big distortions during the pandemic. So on both sides of the border, th those are two reasons, the milder weather and, and seasonal adjustment that probably juiced uh, the two January numbers. And that's why most people are expecting uh, calmer numbers um, for for February on the U.S. side, we are looking for a, a strong pullback. We saw 
uh, over half a million jobs in January, likely to come down to just over 200,000. Now, mind you, that's still above normal job growth, but at least it would mark some slowing in the U.S. Um, the concern, though, is that we could see the unemployment rate drop uh, to a seven-decade low, and that certainly would put uh, a lot of pressure on the uh, on the Federal Reserve to uh, ramp up the pace uh, of, of tightening. You mentioned productivity as well, Sal, when it comes to uh, Canada. Uh, how does Canada compare to the U.S. at this point when it comes to productivity? It's been lagging uh, for a while. Now, the U.S. productivity numbers have not been great either. What happened is uh, right at the start of the pandemic in 2020, there was a surge in productivity because uh, there was a big reduction in kind of lower wage, lower skilled jobs, mostly in the services sector. So productivity spiked higher. And we've generally been pay, uh, seeing the, a payback from that in the past couple of, the, of years, both sides of the border, as all those lower skilled jobs uh, in the service sector uh, came back quite strongly. Uh, the difference, though, is we're starting to see an upturn in U.S. productivity the past couple of quarters, a mild one, but at least moving in the right direction. We have yet to see that in, in Canada, uh, right, right into the, the fourth quarter of last year. There might be a, a lagged effect here because we did reopen a bit uh, later than the U.S., but um, that's a, a real concern for the Bank of Canada because, again, if, if wages are rising about 5% or so, and yet productivity is not increasing or worse, falling, that um, that bill has to be paid, and there, there is more pressure then on companies to try and pass that higher wage bill to their customers, which just kind of reinforces uh, the, the uh, pressure on inflation. I thought it was interesting, too, that you talked about uh, the, the lower Canadian dollar sort of helping to balance things out when it comes to the, the lower productivity in Canada, because we, we talk about the Canadian dollar so much and, and its uh, you know recent weakness, but that sounds like a bit of a uh, maybe a Band-Aid benefit? <laughs> it is. I mean, a weak Canadian dollar, it might be good in the near term for, for exports uh, and economic growth, but longer term, it's, it's bad news, both on the inflation front, because uh, import costs are going up, especially for food, but also on the productivity front, because that cheaper currency is making it more costly for Canadian businesses to invest in, in capital equipment, especially technology. And that's a, an area where Canadian companies are have been lagging the U.S. for, for quite some time and probably accounts for a good chunk of the uh, productivity gap between the two countries. So, you know, if anything, it'd be nice to see the Canadian dollar uh, strengthen over the next while, both to relieve the pressure on inflation and per perhaps to uh, stoke investment uh, in capital equipment.